Today, we are on Act 4, Scene 4 of Romeo and Juliet. We know that Juliet has just taken the potion and we know what's going to happen. So our tension and the dramatic tension are increasing in this scene. This scene that we're going to begin with takes place after Juliet takes the potion and before she's discovered. So it's a break in tension, but in at the same time, it builds up our tension because we want to know what happens when they find out what she's done and whether the potion has worked. So, Lady Capulet, hold, take these keys and fetch more spices. Nurse, they call for dates and quinces in the pantry. Enter old Capulet. Come, stir, 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 the second cock had crowed, the curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Look to the baked goods, meat, Angelica, spare not for cost. So he's excited, he's on the go. You can sense the tone, the excited and urgent tone in his voice. Go, you cot queen, go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick tomorrow for this night's watching. No, not a whit. What I have watched ere now all night for a lesser cause, and ne'er been sick. Ay, you have been a mouse hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. So we can see the banter between Capulet and Lady Capulet. You've been a mouse hunt, you've been a woman hunter, you've chased women in your time, but today I will prevent you from doing any of that now. And Capulet calls her a jealous hood, a jealous hood. Enter three or four serving men with spits and logs and baskets. Capulet continues. Now, fellow, what is there? Thanks for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Make haste, make haste, hurry up. Sirrah, fetch drier logs. Call Peter. He will show thee where they are. I have a head, sir, that will find out logs and never trouble Peter for the matter. Mass and well said, a merry horson, ha, thou shalt be log ahead. Exit second servingman and any others. Good faith, tis day, the county will be here with the music straight, for so he said he would. I hear him near. Nurse, wife, what ho, what nurse, I say. Enter nurse. Go waken Juliet, go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he is come already. Make haste, I say. And now we're on to Act 4, Scene 5, where the nurse has gone to wake up Juliet. Mistress, what mistress? Juliet, fast, I warrant her, she. Why, lamb, why, lady, fie, you slug a bed, you lazy person. Why, love, I say, madam, sweetheart, why, bride, why not a word? You take your pennyworths now. Sleep for a week, for the next night I warrant the county Paris had set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. God forgive me, Mary and, Mary and Amen. How sound is she asleep? I needs must wake her. Madam, 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 I let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up in faith, will it not be? So we see the nurse's bawdy, vulgar humour again, talking about the first marital night where the marriage will be consummated between Juliet and Paris. She opens the bed's curtains. What? Dressed and in your clothes and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady, lady, lady. And then she realises that Juliet is not waking up. Alas, alas, help, help. My lady's dead. Oh, where a day that ever I was born, some aqua vitae, ho, oh, my lord, my lady. And she calls for water and for Capulet and Lady Capulet. Enter Lady Capulet. What noise is here? Oh, lamentable day. What is the matter? Look, look, oh, heavy day. And Lady Capulet sees Juliet. Oh, me, oh, me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. For shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. She's dead, deceased, deceased. She's dead, alack the day. Alack the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Ha, let me see her. Out, alas, she's cold. 
Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. O oh, lamentable day! O oh, woeful time! Death that had taken her hence to make me wail ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Enter the Friar, Friar Lawrence, the county Paris, with musicians. Come, is the, and remember, it was Friar Lawrence's plan that this happen. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return? O oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir, my daughter he had wedded. I will die and leave him all, life living, all his deaths. And here Capulet is saying that instead of Juliet marrying Paris, Juliet has married death, and her virginity and her love and life have all been taken by death. That's grief coming through. Have I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? I've waited so long to see this face in the mornings, and now it's given me this to see. A cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day, most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labour of his pilgrimage. But one, poor one, one poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace in, and cruel death had catched it away from my sight. O oh, woe, O oh, woeful, woeful, woeful day, most lamentable day, most woeful day, that ever, ever I did yet behold. O oh, day, O oh, day, O oh, day, O oh, hateful day, never was seen so black a day as this. O oh, woeful day, O oh, woeful day. It seems to me that the nurse's grief and lamentations are stronger than that of Juliet's parents. Beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain, most detestable death by thee beguiled, by cruel, cruel thee, quite overthrown, O oh love, O oh life, not life, but love in death. Despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed. Uncomfortable time, why camest thou now to murder, murder a solemnity? O oh child, O oh child, my soul and not my child, dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. And Fry Lawrence gives the speech that he's been planning to say, to say that they should have put Juliet ahead of her wishes, in head of what they wanted for her. So this is his lecture. Peace, ho, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps its part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, for twas your heaven she should be advanced, and weep you now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she is well. She's not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair corpse, and as the custom is, and in her best array, bear her to church. For though fond nature bids us all lament, yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. So... The friar calms everyone down and stops them from becoming hysterical. And he says, well, hurry up, get on with it, get on with the funeral. Of course, we know why he wants Juliet taken to the tomb, so that when she wakes up, she is not surrounded by her family, but only by Ju Romeo. All things that we ordain at festival turns from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried corpse, and all things change them to the contrary. Sir, you go in, and madam, go with him, and go, Sir Paris. Every one prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. The heavens do law upon you for some ill, move them no more by crossing their high will and everyone leaves 
except the nurse and the musicians. Faith, we may put up our pipes and be gone. Honest good fellows, ah, put up, put up, for well you know this is a pitiful case. I, by my trot, the case must may be amended. Musicians, oh musicians, heart's ease, heart's ease, oh, and you will have me live, live, play, heart's ease. Notice how they're talking in prose, uh, especially Peter here, which shows his lower station in life. Not a dump, we, tis no time to play now. You will not then? No. I will then give it to you soundly. What will you give us? No money on my fate, but the gleek. I will give you the minstrel. The gleek is a gesture of scorn, so I'm going. He's being contemptuous towards the musicians. Then I will give you the serving creature. Then I will lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate. Pate. I will carry no crochets. I'll re you. I'll fire you. Do you note me? And you ray us and fire us, you note us. Pray, you put up your dagger and put out your wit. So they're having banter. So this releases some of the tension of the earlier scene. Then have you with my wit. I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put out my iron dagger. Answer me like men. And then he sings. When gripping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress, the music with her silver sound. Why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? What say you, Simon Cutling? Marry, sir, because silver hath a sweet sound. Prates. What say you, Hugh Rebeck? I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. Prates too. What say you, James Soundpost? Faith, I know not what to say. Oh, I cry you mercy. You are the singer. I will for you. It is music with a silver sound, because musicians have no gold for sounding. Then music with a silver sound, with speedy help, doth lend redress. What a pestilent knave is this, he saying. Hang him, Jack. Come, wheel in here, tarry for the mourners, and stay dinner. So that's the end of Act 4. We're going to begin Act 5, and conclude the play.